Hey guys, so if you remember, impulse and momentum are vectors. So in some cases, we're going to have collisions happening in two dimensions, and we can use momentum and impulse in two dimensions to solve these problems. Let's check it out. So impulse is also a vector, and its direction is the same as the direction of force. And there's a really easy way to see this. Impulse is force times time, impulse is a vector, force is a vector, they both have direction, time has no direction, so J has to get its direction from, from F, okay? So the direction of J is the same as the direction of F. This is very similar to how when you have P equals MV, the P gets its direction from the vector, the other vector, which is V. All right, so let's talk about two-dimensional momentum and impulse problems. Here's the long form of the momentum impulse equation, and we can write this in the x-axis and in the y-axis, and it would look something like this. You just put x's everywhere. So jx equals fx delta t, changing momentum in the x-axis, mass, velocity final in the x, velocity final in the y. And you could do the same thing for the y-axis would be exactly the same, just replace x's with y's. Let's do an example here. An object of unknown mass, so mass is unknown, initially moving with 200 kilograms meters per second momentum. Um, if I didn't say momentum, you would have known that this is momentum by the units. So here's this object, it's moving this way with a momentum P, let's call this P initial, of 200. This is similar to saying you have an object moving with a velocity of 200, but except now it's a momentum of 200, okay, which is velocity times the mass. Uh, in the positive x-axis, it has 100 newton second, this is impulse, and it says there, of impulse delivered to it by a force directed along the y-axis. So, force uh, J equals FT, if the force is in the y-axis, negative y-axis, this means that the impulse will be in the negative y-axis. So you can think of it this way. You're going like this, and then a force pushes you down. What's going to happen? Well, if you're moving this way, and something pushes you down, you still keep moving that way, but now you're going to face down a little bit and instead go this way. And we can do this with vector um, analysis. So if you're moving this way, then there's a J here of 100, and you now end up going sort of this way here. And this is going to be your P final, all right? The idea here is that J is the change in P, that's part of J, right? So I can expand this PF minus PI. And if I move stuff around, look what I get. Let's move the PI to the other side. It's gonna look like this. Um, J plus PI equals PF. I wanna rewrite this. Uh, to look like this, PF equals PI plus J. And I want to talk about this because that's what I just showed you with my arms. Your final momentum is whatever your initial momentum was plus J. J is the change in momentum. So you're going this way, I pushed you this, so you're going to do this now. Okay, so this is your final momentum. And we want to know the magnitude and direction of the object's final momentum. <clears throat> this is two-dimensional. Um, so one of the ways that we can do this is by calculating PF. If we want to know PF total, right? I didn't, I didn't mention that I want the horizontal or vertical, so we just assume it's the total. I have to find PFY, and then I have to find PFX, okay? And that's because PF is going to be the hypotenuse of the Pythagorean of its components. Cool. I'm going to show you the sort of the long way to do it, and then I'm going to show you how you could have done this a little bit faster. Let me just block off some stuff here. <clears throat> so let's try to find PF. Okay. So JX, PFX, I mean, JX is FX delta TX, delta T, uh, time has no dimension, uh, delta PX. Okay, and I could also write M V final X minus V final V initial X. 
But notice that I don't have the mass and I don't have the velocities. What I do have is I have the momentum and I have the impulse. <clears throat> so we're going to stay just between these two. J delta x is p final minus p initial in the x-axis. Now, I'm being pushed down by an impulse of 100, not 10, sorry about that, 100. By the way, this is negative because it's down. Um, but there is no impulse in the x-axis. If there's no impulse in the x-axis, then this is zero. The imp if there's no impulse, there's no change in there's no change in momentum, and I can move this over to the other side, and you simply get pi, let's do this over here, you simply get pfx equals pix, right? Should make sense. The p's in the x-axis, your momentum in the x-axis didn't change at all, uh, and you didn't have to go through all this. You can just look at the picture, and you could have uh, realized that, well, you're only being pushed down, so you just keep going to the right. There's nothing happening on the x-axis. You keep your same pi, which is 200, okay? Now, for the y-axis, I can write jy delta py, and let's expand this, py or p final y minus p initial y. There is a j in the y-axis, which is negative 100. Um, the p final in the y-axis is what we're looking for. And what about the p initial? Well, if you're moving straight in the right, you're not moving up or down. You have no velocity in the y-axis, so you have no momentum in the y-axis. This is just zero. So your final impulse in the x is 200, and your final impulse on the y-axis is 100. Okay. When you put those two numbers here, this is 200 and this is 100. Not much space there, but we're going to cram it in here. When you do that, you get 224 kilograms meters per second is the unit for impulse. Okay, so that's it. All we had to do is you, the fast way that I promised I was going to explain to have done this is to first have to realize that P is going to be a combination of these two guys, but then to get these two guys, Px is 200. It doesn't change, so it stays at 200. There is no Py. So when you add 100 this way, you have 100 of PY, okay? So that's it. The answer is 224. Um, there is one last part, which is asking for the direction of the final momentum. So this is just vector stuff. Um, I'm going to do the direction right here. Theta is the arc tangent of Y over X. Remember, that's how we find direction. Uh, for vectors when we know the two components. So it's going to be PY over PX, always Y over X, as long as we're getting the angle with the X axis right there, which is what we want. Let's call that theta X, and then this is theta X right here. Uh, if you do this, you get an angle of, I have it here, negative 26.6 degrees. And it makes sense that it's negative because it is below the positive X axis right here, right? So negative makes sense. Cool? So those are the two answers for this part. Um, just a quick example of how, to, how we can combine components of momentum to find the total momentum and the angle of the total momentum. I have a second problem here. Let's jump into that real quick.